Glad to have you join us again on the Value Chain TV News Update. My name is Chad Moses. On the news update, to begin with stories relating to the economy. The complaint of Nigerians concerning the poor online service of some commercial banks is sadly becoming a constant issue. However, recent news on the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, FCCPC, promising to take investigative actions has raised reactions from Nigerians. In these reports, our correspondent Anastasia Adizi took to the streets of Abuja to hear from some aggrieved customers. The report. The Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission has expressed deep concerns about the inconsistencies of banks and online activities. Value Chain TV took to the streets to hear from these consumers themselves. Come with us. What I really want to say it was a bit quite challenging difficulties it caused a lot of damages because what is actually happened to all these banks firstly you cannot make transfer you cannot withdraw you cannot uh, check your account balance it's unfair because actually like me i'm a business personnel and most of people they will say they have transfer and which i didn't see it I went to the bank several occasions, they would say 24 hours, but they could not rectify it. So, at least, maybe the government should help us to look into it, so that even though this uh, network issue wants to happen, at least they're supposed to have a, a notification that, okay, well, this so -so -so thing is going on, so that at least everybody will be aware. Commercial banks in Nigeria oh my goodness number one is unsolicited deductions i'm a living witness i will just sit down like this and see money deducted from my account and when you find out they will give you they will tag a name to it then if you're debited and you're not being paid it takes ages like ages a lot of complaints a lot of persons have been going to human rights radio and television complaining how their monies have been deducted and when you go there they will tell you write a letter after 21 working days after 14 working days and nothing is done absolutely nothing recently some major banks i don't want to call their names because i don't want to do advert for them a lot for almost three weeks they kept us in the dark you cannot withdraw you cannot transfer, you cannot buy a, a data, you cannot recharge your DSCV or even your a, a NEPA. People were stagnant, like they were not able. I am a living witness. That's why I am so grieved like, right now. I really thank these uh, online televisions and radio that are going on trying to synthesize Nigerians. The banks need to sit up. And CBN, I put it to you. You need to do more. You need to do more. You need to look into the issues concerning our banking sector. Given that these inconsistencies has been reoccurring, Nigerians hope that as FCCPC is now involved, the banks will take them and their services more seriously. For Value Chain TV, Anastasia Adeze reporting. Still on economic matters, the Minister of State Petroleum Resources, Gas, Eric Bay Ekbo, has secured a commitment from Jandal Group to offtake about 450 million metric standard cubic feet per day of natural gas to underpin a $4 billion investment in a 10 million tons per annum hot brick rated iron steel plant to be located at Aquai Bombs Solutions Hub Industrial Park. This project is expected to create thousands of jobs and position Nigeria as a regional powerhouse for industrialization and high-grade steel production. The agreement was sealed after a meeting in New Delhi, India, between Ekbo and Jundal's group chairman, Mr. Naveen Jindal, with discussions underway to finalize the gas sales and purchase agreement for the supply of natural gas to the Indian firm. The federal government, through the Presidential Compressed Natural Gas Initiative, PCNGI has signed an agreement with taxi operators at the Nnamdi Azikiwe International Airport, Abuja. The deal will convert 800 vehicles from petrol to compressed natural gas, CNG, with the aim of reducing shuttle fares by 30%. The program's director and chief executive of the PCNGI, Michael Olubemi, stated at the agreement signing in Abuja, that the conversion aligns with the current administration's commitment to transition in 1 million commercial vehicles to compressed natural gas.
And on the Northern Blackouts update, the federal government has said that electricity will be restored to northern Nigeria within the next three days. Speaking in Abuja while responding to questions from members of the Senate Committee on Power, the Minister of Power, Adipayo Adelabu, disclosed that power will get there in the next 72 hours, adding that as a temporary measure, power would be supplied through the Uguaji Makodi transmission line, which could cover approximately 80% of the affected states. Adelabu noted that efforts were on the way to access the damaged grid with assistance of security agencies. Moving to the health sector, nearly 4.3 million children across Africa are missing essential vaccines, leaving them vulnerable to outbreaks of vaccine-preventable diseases such as polio, measles, diphtheria and yellow fever. This was disclosed by the UNICEF's Regional Director for West and Central Africa, Gil Sfagninau, in Lagos, at the launch of an immunization awareness album as part of UNICEF's activities to mark World Polio Day and reduce the number of unvaccinated children. The song features 12 top musicians and UNICEF's champions across Africa. While reaffirming the state's commitment to improving healthcare, the wife of Lagos State Governor, Dr. Ibijoke Sanwo Olu, reiterated the importance of full awareness and immunization for children to safeguard their health. Moving to the international news, the National Petroleum Corporation of Namibia, NAMCO, has revealed plans to triple its stake in future oil and gas projects to 30% as a Southern African nation is set for a surge in activity following multiple offshore discoveries. Namibia's discoveries are drawing increased exploration activities even as oil measures development budgets have become more constrained in line with shifting priorities in the global energy transition. Following transition by Shell, PLC and Total Energies SE, Activities has ramped up again, with at least four drilling campaigns set to start before the end of the year. AMCO said its decision to pursue higher stakes in new projects was influenced by several key factors, including the overall commercial viability, strategic benefits to Namibia, and potential for sustainable development. Finally, on sports, Nigeria is set to debut at the 2024 World Sambo Championship in Astana, Kazakhstan, from November 6 to 10, following their impressive outing at African Beach Sambo Championship in Morocco. The Nigerian contingent, led by Blind Sambis, Samuel Oladele Kekere, will join athletes from 79 other countries at the Wrestling Palace, named after Zaxilik Ukem Spiro's Martial Arts Palace. African women's champion Charity Jato, alongside James Cheguam and Alana Balogun, will complete the team for Nigeria under the tutelage of Lagos State coach Benga Montana. And this concludes the Value Chain TV News update. I remain Chad Moses. Many thanks for watching.